Well, a customer brought us a 1977 Corvette. Uh, they were looking for some upgrades in their interior. They wanted to be able to connect their phones. They wanted a reverse backup camera and, uh, you know, better AC. Uh, the owner brought it to us and it had an engine swap and they didn't put the AC back in and they, and they began with wanting the AC to be reinstalled. We found that it's going to be more cost effective to install a vintage air kit. The original Corvette console had gauges in the center. Uh, there was a set of six of them. A couple of them were dummies and a factory single den radio. Uh, due to the fact that we were putting a double den in there, the whole center console had to be remade and all the center gauges had to be removed. Um, so by removing these, we now have to have a new location for the gauges. We looked at Dakota Digital's options and found that they make a set of 47 to 53 Chevy truck gauges that offer the water temperature, the oil pressure, uh, the RPMs along with the speed, and all your necessary gauges right in front of you. Uh, and that eliminates having to have them in the center of the car. Dakota Digital offers a kit made for this Corvette, but because of the custom council, we chose to go a different route. I think that the VHX Dakota Digital gauges are fantastic. They're, they're easy to wire. Um, it's kind of all self-explanatory. The instructions are great. I think they look fantastic in every car that we've ever put them in. Uh, they're offered in several different backgrounds. They have several different needle colors and background lighting colors you can change from. Inside of the gauges, there's a clock. You can digitally LCD screen your, your oil pressure, your voltmeter, so you can have a better visual while driving down the road. After we've got the dash removed, it left us with a bunch of wiring that had to be labeled in order to connect to our Dakota Digital VHX box in order to run the Dakota Digital gauges. So what I've done is I've traced back and I went ahead and I've labeled all the wires I'm going to reuse and the wires I'm not going to use, um, for example the dash, original dash lighting um, here and also in the gauge cluster in the center. Um, I've trimmed all those back and heat shrink them so that it way they don't cause a short later. These wires down here all go to the original factory gauge cluster. Um, I've gone through and I've tra traced them all back to uh, their proper locations and labeled them accordingly. They send senders that plug into the engine uh, in place of the water temperature gauge and oil pressure gauge and then you just plug those into your VHX box and then there's one plug that runs from the back of your gauges and into that VHX box. It's a data cable that links all your information into your gauges. The Dakota Digital VHX box is probably six by four inches by about an inch thick. Um, we place it on the transmission tunnel just below the radio. Um, the gauges themselves are also thinner than factory gauges, and so it actually cleared up a little bit of room behind the dashboard and left us some room for the vintage air tubing. There's a power and a ground to the box itself, and then your cinders plug in and it's all labeled. So the gauges come with these gauge retainers. Um, I, there's two different styles that it comes with, and the ones that I chose seem to fit the back of the gauge as close as possible. And what I've done here is actually just drilled new holes in the gauge surround. And it looked as if I could use the factory ring, the retaining ring. Uh, I put the ring around it and put screws in it. Once I installed the gauges, the original dash panel fit really well. Um, in fact, it fit just like it came out from factory. I put the three screws in from the top, there's two on the sides, and the gauges didn't give me any troubles. The factory gauges, the lighting was a bit dim due to the fact that it's a reflective light. Dakota Digital offers an LED backlit screen where you can also change the brightness of your gauges. The backup camera was relatively simple to install. It came as a kit with all the wiring and the length that we needed. But in Ovet, there's not a whole lot of spots on the back to hide a camera. So we opted for the license plate mount slim version of the reverse camera. I installed that, brought in my wires up through the back and ran them along the frame rail and into the battery box. The one that runs to the back of the radio that connects to your camera feed. There's another wire that goes to your shifter and whenever you put the car in reverse, it sends a signal to turn on the camera so that way you can see what's behind you.